Today we are learning to crochet the jasmine stitch. It's like little flowers stacked on top of each other. It's a very chunky stitch. You can see the side of it here. So it's often used for hot pads because it's so thick. But it's ideal for blankets and great for scarves and shawls. And you can also use it for things like bags and purses. It of course looks different depending on what kind of yarn you are using. You can make it in any yarn and uh, have a hook that goes with the yarn you have. These are my favorite hooks. You can check the description for this. So let's start the tutorial. So we start with a slip knot. And then just chain one. We only chain one because the loops we are starting to make are what are making the foundation row we need. Stretch the stitch you have about two centimeters, a bit less than an inch. And it's important to try to keep the length of the stitch that you stretch always about the same. Then a yarn over and insert your hook in that one stitch we made. Pull up the loop and stretch that to the same length as the other one. And then we do that again. Yarn over and pull up a loop. So now here we have five loops on the hook. And now hold on to sort of pinch the yarn that you are working with. Take the yarn over and pull through all the time holding on to this here yarn. And then insert the hook in the loop that you made with the yarn you were holding on to. And a yarn over. Now you have two loops on the hook and a yarn over and pull through both of them. This is the basic stitch we need all the time. Then again, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert the hook now at the base of where the yarns come from. So this here hole that we made at the end of the last stitch. So insert the hook there and again pull up a loop, yarn over and insert the hook in the same place and pull up a loop. And now hold on to this here working yarn and uh, pull the yarn through all of the loops at the same time and again insert the hook under this here loop that you were holding on to and get the yarn and again yarn over and pull through both of these two. So now we have two and then this is what we continue. I'll make one more here now a bit faster. Holding on to that and a stitch at the top. So now continue making these until your work is as wide as you want it to be. So if it's a scarf or a blanket or whatever. I'm only making a sample so I'll make a few more and then I come back. Now I have a few of them made and then we start going back. We turn and the first part of it is the same. Stretch yarn over, make a stitch. But now we leave it as it is and then we continue into the next stitch we have in between these here loops. Yarn over and find that there stitch in between those. So you insert the hook there and pull up a loop the same length as the others. And a second time, yarn over and pull up a loop. So twice there. And then one more, yarn over and go into the next one. And there again, yarn over and pull up a loop twice. So this means that now we have 13 stitches on this here hook. And again now hold on to the yarn and now we need to pull the yarn through all of these at the same time. So a yarn over, 
holding on to the yarn and face your foot downwards otherwise it will catch with the yarns and then pull through all of them and now again insert it into that there that you were holding on to and uh, stitch there and uh, yarn over through both of those so this is how we turn at the beginning and then we continue stretch yarn over and now again go into that there in that there stitch that we made at the end of those 13 loops and uh, twice so we have five loops on the hook and then we'll do the same in the next one and the one after so always yarn over insert the hook and pull up a loop and that twice you would actually see this also done so that you have three times this so that makes even thicker yarn over and skip to the next one pull up a loop and again and here again hold on to the working yarn yarn over and pull through all of them and insert the hook into where you were pinching the yarn there and make a stitch so this is what we repeat well i just did there i'll do it one more time so stretch it gets much faster as you get used to it here twice and the next one and then hold on to the yarn and pull through and stitch to secure so here's what the first row is starting to look like and now continue that until the end, whatever length you have, so that the last group of these loops goes into the very first stitch where we started. Here, I'm at the end there, and uh, then we need to make one stitch for turning. So stretch a loop again, and then we need to turn. And then we make a stitch here. You go into that there, stitch that we had done at the end and the second time and uh, here again pinch it like that there so this was like a stitch for turning and now we continue the same having three so that you make the loop starting here and in there and in here so stretch and then go in here the next bit and next bit always yarn over and pull up a loop twice and then again hold on to the yarn through all of them and make a stitch and then continue the same i'll make a couple here and then i'll show what it looks like like this so we see that it's starting to form these sort of flowers each bit is part of actually two flowers and then those will continue as you work on so continue like this here exactly the same always just have to remember that every time you turn you first make just one stitch with loops before you start doing these where you always have three groups of loops. Now I crochet another row so you can see the flowers forming well now. And check out also this playlist with many more textured stitches. Until next time.